Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where we've had a few requests to take a look at Tuesday's uh, New York Times hard puzzle. Uh, New York Times hard Sudoku is one of my favourites from the sort of the whole panoply of uh, national newspapers Sudokus that we're faced with every day. Um, all of them are created by computer. Uh, there's no handcrafted puzzles appearing in the daily press, um, but the New York Times algorithm is, is one of the better ones. So if you if you need to choose a puzzle to do every day, uh, I suppose that would be one I'd recommend if you can't get your hands on a handcrafted puzzle. Um, so let's take a look at how we would solve this. Um, I'm going to go. Th I'm going to step through this reasonably slowly, just to make sure that for those of you who are new to the channel, you. Um, can pick up on some of the logic that we recommend. So, first thing to do is to go around the grid and populate it with pencil marks, as I'm doing here. So, all I'm doing is scanning uh, the rows and columns and boxes and trying to identify areas where a number can only go in exactly two positions in a three by three box. Um, and when I find such a situation, I just make little pencil marks in the corners. If you want to try the puzzle, by the way, just click on the link under the video. That'll take you to our software. New York Times doesn't have an archive, so uh, in order th that you guys can actually play the puzzle, uh, you're going to have to use our software rather than theirs, I'm afraid. Um, so, two, sevens, fours. Ah, okay. Now, the other trick that New York Times loves to do is this sort of situation. Have a look at this box, see if you can spot anything interesting about it. And the key with the New York Times is very much, believe it or not, to focus on open flanks within 3x3 three three boxes. So in this 3x3 three three box, these two would be, you know, they're completely open. All of these three cells contain no digits and they are all aligned. They are all in the same row, just as these three cells, again, all open, contain no digits, and all in the same column. Now if we have a look at these three cells here, it's obvious that these three cells cannot contain the numbers 2, 3, or 6, because um, they're already in this box. Therefore, if we take a hard look at this whole row, where can the numbers 2 and 6 go? Well, given that they can't go in any of those three squares, the numbers 2 and 6 only have two positions left that they can go into, and that's those two. So, actually, we can make a slightly different pencil mark. So where I set pencil mark in the center of cells, that's saying, rather than looking at the box and identifying two positions where a number can go into, if I look at this pencil mark with the 2 and 6 in the center, I'm saying this cell can only be a 2 or a 6. Um, so I do recommend two different types of pencil mark. Now, if these two cells are 2 and 6, these cells here have got to be 5, 8, and 9 in some order. Well, actually, we're going to be able to fit in all of them because we've already got an 8 and a 9 in column 2, so this square can only be a 5. Um, now, this square can't be a 9 because the 9 down here, so that's going to be a 9. This must be an 8. Oops. So we're off to the races. Now these two squares can only be eights because of these two eights here. Uh, this seven, obviously there can't be a seven in this square in column two, so the seven must be in one of those two squares. Ah, and this is another reason that uh, we recommend the pencil marking. So let's have a look at this box and this box. Now you can see here that we've identified that the sevens in this box must be in row 8 or row 9 and the sevens in this box also are in row 8 or row 9. So in the finished solution there will either be a 7 here and a 7 here or there will be a 7 here and a 7 here. One of those situations must be true. But in either of those cases, there obviously can't be any more sevens in row eight and row nine. We've got enough sevens in row eight and row nine. Uh, however, these sevens are arranged. So in this three by three block over on the right hand side, the seven must be in row seven. Because of this seven here, we actually get to highlight 
that into one of those two squares. Um, ah, we can get a six. Look, this six here and this six here interact on this block. They lock a six into one of those two squares, which means there's a six in one of these three squares in the bottom, but we have a six here and a six here. So in fact, the six must be in that square. Uh, what now? What now? I hear you ask. Ah, okay, right. Interesting. Interesting. Right. What we need to do now is we need to carry on pencil marking, but I want to pencil mark twos. I want us to go around the grid and make sure we've got all our pencil marks for twos in the grid. Because this two and this two interact rather nicely on this three by three block. You can see that they force a two either into this square or this square. And that means in this three by three block, that the only positions for twos are in these two squares, because obviously we've got what, two in either of those squares and this two up here. Now, look at this two. Because this two forces the two in the top right hand three by three box to either be in this square or this square. And we've got a similar thing going on to the sevens, but it's just a little bit harder to spot. So if we look up here, down here, and think about twos, you can see in this 3x3 three three block, the 2 is either in column 7 or column 9. And in this 3x3 three three block, again, the 2 is either in column 7 or in column 9. So we know that in the finished solution, the 2 will either be here, and therefore here, because this square obviously can't be a 2 if this one is a 2, or here and here. Either way around, it's not possible there to be any more twos in column seven or column nine so we can rule out twos from all of those squares in this box and look there's a two over here as well so this square can't be a two all of which means we actually get to get another two in the grid and now we've got two here and a two here so that's a two looking at our earlier pencil marks now this one can't be a two anymore so this is a two Oops. And can we go any further than that? Don't know. Maybe. But uh, we've now got a lot of digits, I suppose, in this row. Let's check it. We still need a 1, a 3, and an 8. Ah, OK. And now we can enter in another digit. So if we look upwards, you can see 1's appearing in those two squares. So where can a 1 go in row 4? Well, only in this position. This is now a 3 or an 8, and this is a 3 or an 8. Ah, but this 8 here is important, isn't it? Where can an 8 now go in the central 3x3? Three three? Well, there's only one position. It's going to have to be there. You can see a few things that are going to arise from that. Let's complete row 4. This must be a 3 now. It must be pencil mark 3s at the bottom here. Um, this one means there must be a one in one of those two squares and that means there must be a one in one of these two squares and look we've got this whole pattern going on again now with ones so again we've got this sort of X shape of ones exactly the same as the X shape on the sevens exactly the same as the sort of offset X shape on the twos so we've now we now cannot have any more ones in column one or column three. So we're actually going to get a one seven pair now at the bottom there. Therefore, this square must be a four to complete the column. Four here and four here I mean this is the only candidate for four in its box, which means we get to pencil mark fours at the bottom again. Just change that to make it clearer to me that that's a one seven pair. Um, OK, so we've now got loads of stuff going on. Um, let's have a look at this 8 and this 8. 
there's actually there's only one and this eight as well there's only one place an eight can go now in this block and that's going to be here now the moment I put this eight in look what's going to happen I'm going to take the position of a pencil mark six now as I know that my logic for pencil marking was that a six if, if I see a six in a cell the pencil marked it means that it's one of two positions in the block that an, a six can go into so if I remove one of those two positions the other one which is pencil mark here must be true so the moment I put an 8 here, I know this must be a 6. And the moment I put a 6 here, I'm taking the position of a pencil mark 2, look. So I'm going to be able to go 6, 2, like that. And therefore, this must be a 2. Again, unwinding pencil marks. Unwind the pencil mark at the bottom. And that was a good... Yeah, that's made some real progress, hasn't it? So now... These scales must be 1, 8, and 9 because of the, you know, we need those numbers to complete the box. We have a 1 and a 9 already in column 9. So that one's an 8. And this is a 1, 9 pair. These two cells now must be, uh, what they must be, they must be 3 and 5 to complete the row. And we have a 3 here. So this is a 3. And this is a 5. Now we have a 5 here and a 5 here, so this must be a 5. We can pencil mark 5s into the corners down here because of this 5 and this 5. Now if we look at this box, because this is a 1, 7 pair, this must be a 4, 8 pair to complete the box. So let's Put that in and highlight it. Now, if this is four and eight, we still need to put a one and a seven into these two positions. Uh, but we can pencil mark one sevens into there. So to complete this row, we still need three, five, and nine. So threes into one of those two squares. We don't know anything really about fives and nines, though, do we? Uh, that's a bit frustrating, so I'll have to come back to that. But if we look at here, because we've got a 4 in one of these two squares, let's look over here, and look, we've got again, we've got the same pattern going on throughout this puzzle over and over again. So I know that in this 3x3 three three block, I can't have a 4 in any of those squares. And you can, if you're not quite sure about that, if you try it, Imagine there was a 4 here, what would the implication of our pencil marking be? Well in this block it would be that there must be a 4 here and in this block it would mean there must be a 4 here and look we get a repeated 4 in row 9 so oh wow I want to undo, 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 that's better so therefore there must be a 4 in one of these three squares and we have a four there so we can pencil mark some fours into this bottom box here um, now let's have a look see what else we can see we've got a five here so that's going to allow us to pencil mark fives at the top which means there must be a five in one of those two squares I think so this square is very restricted this must be a four or a nine wondering whether we can go do any better than that. Ah, now, when I when I put that 2 in, if I delete that 2, will it actually, yes, let's have a look. When I put that 2 in, I wasn't careful, look, because in, in putting the 2 in, I actually took the position of a 6 that had been pencil marked. So I should have gone 2, 6, and now that would also give me a 5 now. So that was me being careless. It's very easy to do. Um, but anyway, I did spot it. So now this 5 interacts down here. Look. Now there must be a 5 in one of these two squares because of the 5 here and 5 here. These two squares have got to be uh, 9 and 7 in some order. So let's put that in and see if that helps. Yeah, it does. That means that this must be the 9 
in this box, which means this is a 1. Now we get to pencil mark 1s at the bottom, and we, we manage to pencil mark the 1s in the same positions that the 4s are pencil marked in. So this is a 1-4 pair now in this box. Uh, this square is forced to be a 7, just to complete the column, obviously. These two squares, therefore, must be 3 and 8. So let's, again, let's put that in. You can see, hopefully, if you're following the logic we've been using, look, we've got the pattern on 8s now. So we know that the 8s in this uh, 3 by 3 must be in the central part of it. And we have an 8 here and an 8 here. Now, this is going to crack the whole puzzle now because you can see the moment I put an 8 into this square I'm taking the position of a 4 so I'm going to be able to do that, that she's going to take the position of a 7 that which takes the position of a 5 bang and all of a sudden that is a serious serious uh, advance in terms of the total solve so now we go 4 here that must be a 9 therefore unwind the 9 and the 7 uh, this now must be a 7 look at the top we still need a 4, I think, into the top row. And there's a 4 there, so we go 4 and 5 like that. This must be a 5 now. This must be 3 and 9. And you can see the 9 here allows us to resolve it. This must be a 3. This 3 points at this square, so that's going to be an 8. That's going to be a 3. This 8 points at the, over here, so that all unwinds. This all unwinds. This must be a 1 now, that unwinds that, and all of a sudden, as I'm sure you're appreciating, the whole puzzle is falling. We need a 1 and a 4 into these two squares, this 4 here is going to fix that. 4, 1, 1, 7, check, it's correct, and that is how to do the New York Times. So for those of you relatively new to sort of more advanced solving of Sudoku, I really hope that... Um, some of the techniques I showed you there were, were, were interesting. Uh, if they were, do consider subscribing. We really appreciate it. And I'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.